he asked a two-part relationship question. The first part being, as we were speaking earlier about letting go, that he said, if I'm going to let go of all my expectations, why even have the relationship? Why do I need them in my life if I don't expect anything of them? And then the second question being, and if I do need them, if it's a relationship we really want to hold on to, how do I let go? So it's a great question because you're right. Many of us think of relationships as, what am I going to get? Whether it's about sensual pleasures, whether it's about the pleasure of being on the elbow of, or the arm of someone who looks beautiful or is of some post that feels important to us, whether we're marrying for money, whether, whatever it may be, a lot of us think, what am I going to get out of it? Even if it's just on an emotional level. I feel full of holes. Inside me, let's say, I feel not enough, as so many of us feel. Maybe I feel that I'm, I'm ugly and I'm stupid. And since I'm ugly and I'm stupid, I'm worthless. And then I meet you and you say to me, oh, you are my Miss Universe. You are, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. Well, boom, my hole is filled. I no longer feel ugly. And you say to me, you are the most perfect, amazing being I have ever met. I cannot imagine how I ever lived without you. Boom, my hole of feeling worthless filled. With you, I feel full. The problem with that is that as I grow, my holes change. Hopefully, hopefully we don't stay stagnant in life. Hopefully the issues that we struggle with at 18 or 20 or 28 or 30 are not the issues that we have later in life. Hopefully on some psychological or spiritual level we're growing. So as my holes change, it no longer fits so perfectly. Right? If I've got, let's say metaphorically, a square hole and you've got a square peg, we fit perfectly. But as my hole changes shape and your peg metaphorically changes shape, so now I'm a triangle, you're a circle, we no longer fit. So where I had fallen in love, now I fall out of love. And now I say things like, oh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to you. You used to be so nice to me. You used to make me feel so good. But that's because I needed you to fill my holes. So it's a great question because in order to really have a relationship, we need to stop relying on people to fill our, to fill our holes. That's not why we go into relationships. We go in not as a half plus half equals one. We should go in as one plus one equals one. On weddings, Pooja Swamiji always gives the blessings. May one plus one be one. That you come together. So I have to become one before I get into that relationship. Which means I'm getting into it not to get my holes filled. I'm getting into it for one beautiful reason. When we connect with another being, if we really connect in love, we're connecting with spirit. And as people ask, how do we connect with God? How do we connect with spirit? How do we connect with the universe? Well, one of the best ways is love someone. If you can't connect immediately with the divine inside? If you can't connect with the divine in a house of worship of your religion, but you can actually really love someone. Not just the body, that's lust, but actually the essence of who they are, their spirit, their soul. If you can connect with that, you are loving the divine. 
Because in order to connect with their spirit and their soul, you can only do it with your spirit. Body does not connect to soul. Body connects to body. Mind connects to mind. Neurosis connects to neurosis. Whole connects to peg. This is how it works. But soul, soul connects to soul. So if I'm connecting to your soul, I have to do it from my soul. Which means that through you, I have touched my soul. Through you, I have touched love. And that is why we love others. You know, when we speak about a spiritual path and the, the difference between Chalo Sanyasle, Yagrastil, are we going to connect to God through a path of renunciation? A path of celibacy? Great. Or are we going to connect to God through a householder path? Also great, if that's what you've chosen. Both are ways, ultimately, to connect with God. And so it's not connect with God only through the path of renunciation and celibacy. If you're on a path of a householder stage, use that to connect with God. Doesn't mean you can't appreciate the body. Bodies are beautiful. Every shape, every size, every color, they're all beautiful. Appreciate it. But love the soul and spirit with your soul. That's ultimately what our relationships are supposed to give us. Not just, you know, someone to cook for us or do the dishes or bring home the bacon or the bread or whatever it is that we we Not just someone to go on vacation with, but someone through whom I'm able to connect with the divine. That's actually what it's about. And when you connect in love, here's the beautiful thing about love. If you take an air conditioner that gives you cold air, the closer you stand to it, the more cold air you get. Because the cold air is coming from the air conditioner. Turn on a heater, closer you stand to it, the more hot air you get. The hot air is coming from the heater. But with love, if I love you, and then you get up, and you go to the kitchen, or you go to work, or you go across the world, I don't actually feel any less love. If I go into the other room, I no longer feel the AC. If I go into the next room, I no longer feel the heat. But if you go in the next room, I still feel the love. Why? Because the love is not from you, it's in me. You have catalyzed my internal love manufacturing machine. That's why we get into relationship. Through you, I have been able to turn on that which produces love in me. That's what it gives us. Love, connection, spirit, essence, all of that within me, catalyzed by you. And then, so how do we let go? Well, you make, you make really a conscious, a conscious decision. You know, I always share the story of my dad, who's a, a divorce attorney. So he's, he's 73 now. He has spent the last... 45 years getting people divorced. It's what he does. Somebody has to do it. It's what he does. So, and in LA, obviously, he's very busy. So, through all of his years, however many of the tens of thousands of people he's gotten divorced and all their stories he hears, he has come up with a teaching that interestingly matches exactly a teaching that Puja Swamiji gives from the spiritual side. Puja Swamiji gives it from teachings from the Bhagavad Gita, other teachings from the scriptures, 
My dad gives it from teachings of a lifetime of getting people divorced. But the teaching is exactly the same, which is your only mantra in a marriage or in any relationship that you really want to work is, okay, honey. Okay, honey. Now, the dilemma, the dilemma is a lot of us think, well, if I do that, well, so that person's going to walk all over me. What about what I want? Valid question. But here, you ask yourself, you've really got a choice. Let's take something simple. You want to eat pizza. The other person wants to eat Chinese food. Okay, you're fighting. Take your fighting. Finally, finally you win. Take a, the body, the body, body, you win. Pizza. Okay? So you get pizza. But along with your pizza, what you've got is a fight in your relationship. Now you tell me, how is that pizza going to taste? Your pizza is going to, <laughs> your pizza is going to digest or not digest. End of the day. End of the day. When one of you is on the living room couch, what have you gotten from that pizza? And so the question, whether it's about what we're going to eat or about other things in our life, the question is, is it more important to be right or is it more important to be in love? My dad always tells young men who are just about to get married, he says, you have got only one choice in your marriage. You think you've got a lot of choices, you've actually only got one. And your only choice is whether you want to be right or you want to be married. That those, are the only, those are your only options. Either you get to be right or you get to stay married. And whether you, whether you think about a, an actual marriage or you think about a best friendship or you think... Whatever it may be, is it really more important to be right than to be in love? And so we let it go because we say letting it go does not mean you are right. It does not mean, okay, I concede, I am the weak one, you are the strong one, I surrender. It's not, it's not that. It's... I am actually the strong one. People think it makes us look weak, but it actually makes us look strong. Because if in order for me to be happy, I seriously need to eat pizza, I'm not very strong inside. If in order for me to be strong, I need to convince you until you finally say, okay, you are right, I'm not strong inside. But if I have the ability to say, Peace is my highest goal. Love is my highest goal. And to actually let go of my own ego, that's what you're letting go of. You're letting go of your ego that says, no, why always me? Why can't I get what I want? Why always that person? You're letting go of that. That is what stands between you and love, between you and peace. So once you recognize that that thing is actually the wall between you and love and you and peace, you let it go. Choose love. Let that be your 2019 resolution.